This week's video is sponsored by Case. Capture with confidence. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the Lake District and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to head out and go back into the woods and try and get some more um, spring images. We've been up since about 5 a.m. this morning. We're just gonna have another coffee right now though, because um, we've woken up. It looked as though it was gonna be fog this morning on the weather apps, um, but nothing really. I mean, we've got some high level fog kind of up on top of the hills. It's kind of, low level cloud really rather than fog um up on top of the hills there but nothing really low down so we're going to have a little wander into the woods later and hope we get some of that kind of um low cloud kind of dropping a little and come coming into the woods but we'll just have to see what we get so going to settle down have another quick coffee before we set off and then we'll get going so Back in the lakes again with uh, Mr. Gary Goff again. Uh, afternoon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been up since five and we've just left the van at what time? Quarter to seven. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason for it is is because the weather's not changed from the time we've been here. It's pretty much clouded in and it clagged in this morning. So we're going to head back down to uh, the location we were at a couple of weeks ago and uh, check out what the bluebells were like because uh, they were kind of still coming out, weren't they, last time we were there? So uh, hopefully this time... It should be good. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. <laughs> So actually we've come back to the same location as we were um, the last video there and it's actually worse because there's so much more undergrowth has come up over the last couple of weeks and um, I'll just pop that clip up now of the same composition that I took that last visit and it's quite a lot more overgrown so I don't think it's actually going to work quite as well. So with that in mind, I think we're going to kind of head back down and out of this location and try and find something else um, and, and see what else we can work with. The buzzing in the background is uh, Gary flying his drone. So uh, yeah, we're going to do a little down here, see, see if I can find another composition that will work a lot better than that one will. Because I think I've got the best shot I probably can in there for the time being and then see if I can find something else. So just on my way back down from this location that we visited last time, I actually kind of turned around to see where Gary was and I noticed a little composition right here. And that's a big tip really, is to not always look in one direction. Sometimes on your way out of a location, if you look back to where you've just been, you'll, you'll see shots that will work. And that's what's happened here. I've got this lovely fern here and actually I've found a shot that works in two directions. So incorporating this fern, which is just down below me here, um, I've moved myself over to the right, letterbox pano again, because it's eliminating the sky, although I've, I've left a bit of light up in the top left corner because I think I can use that to add that sort of almost like a, a bleed of light coming in from top left, which works quite well. And then, I've added a polarizer in this instant because I really do want to saturate these beautiful purples of the bluebells and make the most of those with this shot. Um, and yeah, just added that little bit of saturation by using that polarizer there. And what I'll do is, is I'm, I'm gonna try and get you to the back of the camera so you can actually see what I'm looking at. And then I'll be able to swing you around and show you the shot in two di different directions using the same element You'll see I've got this letterbox panel, which I was just explaining, and you'll see that I've got this fern off to the right, which is just there in this shot. 
and also this fallen log with moss on it which is just down in the lower section of the frame I've then got this sycamore which is just here and then obviously I've got all of these trees and I've separated them out as best I can all the way across and I'm as I say using a polarizer just to saturate the best of those colors as I can get out of them and also just to take any reflection because obviously we've got that light coming in from the top left there and normally I'd want to eliminate as much sky as possible but, but I think I can kind of use that section because that tree in that frame just up here is actually quite interesting it's got an interesting shape I thought I could use that as a bit of a light bleed into the um, into the bluebells because obviously because you've got that opening it's letting light through so the, the section below with the bluebells is actually lighter so I think it actually quite work works quite well just to get give, give a bit of a dynamics to the shot rather than it just being flat because we haven't got a whole lot of light today it's quite flat it's quite overcast so any sort of light that I can get to come in and lift the shot is a huge benefit so I'm going to use that to it the best of my advantage so yeah simple shot and now I, the one thing that I really don't have to worry about today is it's there's barely a breath of wind at all so I don't have to worry about upping my uh, ISO or adjusting anything to compensate for shutter speed because there's barely a breath of wind at all. So at the minute I'm at one and a half seconds, F16, ISO 100. Focusing in basically on that fallen log on the floor, I'll just grab this shot. There we go. And then the next shot that I want to show you is, is if I just move myself across now I've seen a very a, a similar shot but looking the other way so tilting myself round a little I'm just going to adjust to make sure I'm still nice and level still using that fern but in a slightly different position and then I've got now got this slope coming down from the top right down to the bottom left and that log is all obviously in the bottom left of the frame. I just adjust myself a little more here. Now you'll notice I haven't got a whole lot of um, sky in the frame because I've tried to eliminate as much as possible in this shot, but I've got this lighter section back here in the image that I can use again to add a bit of dynamics, a bit, a bit more depth to the image by adding light coming in from that area. So, what I'm going to do now is actually focus in on the fern itself using that as my focus point keeping my shutter speed in the same place I'll adjust my polarizer to get the best out of those colors again one and a half seconds f16 ISO 100 and I'm just going to actually get it I'm going to underexpose slightly here actually 1.3 seconds f16 ISO 100 and then I'm going to grab that shot and then in post what I'll end up doing is that lighter area of trees that I've just shown you in the background there I'll probably make the most of that by lightening them as much as possible so that it looks as though you've got that light coming in from that end of the shot and that just kind of gives you that depth a bit more dynamics to the shot and obviously it's just going to help lift it a little more let's take another one just to make sure now hopefully both of these shots have turned out. If they have, I'll pop them both up side by side now and then you can tell me which one you prefer out of both of them. Now you can see I haven't moved at all and it's literally just a little movement just tilting myself around but I think both shots work really, really well.
So we've moved a little further down the valley and uh, come to this next location that Gary's showing me. And it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Looks a lot more full of bluebells anyway. Yeah, it looks impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. Just need a bit of light now. Well, yeah. Fingers and a bit of mist. A bit of mist. Not asking too much, is no, it, just, really? Just add it in post. It'll be yeah, all right. Yeah. A few unicorns. Like everybody else does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some rainbows, unicorns. <laughs> And wow, look at the difference in this location. It's just an absolute carpet of blue everywhere you look. Absolutely stunning. And I'm obviously walking on this path, which is a, it's a badger track, which is uh, just been <laughs> cut through the swathes here as they've been going foraging at night. And the other place had a similar sort of a, a location where all the badgers, there was badger sets everywhere. Absolutely stunning. So. Definitely going to have a scout through here because I can't believe how vivid it is through here. We've definitely picked the right sort of day for it. It's very overcast, but we're getting some of that dappled light coming through. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we get some nice conditions. Now, looking at this scene, I really want to incorporate this tree because it's it's got these lovely, beautiful mosses on it. And as you can see, the, the sun is coming in from over at the right here and it's just highlighting all these mosses on the right of the tree as well as these fallen logs in the foreground as well which are just stunning and amongst all these bluebells and this path that I was talking about just a moment ago I want to also incorporate that because it's kind of leads in from the right hand side of the frame and curves round at the back and it just gives the eye somewhere to kind of follow through so I really want to use that there's one little bit of uh, brush, if I just kind of walk up this way a little, if you can uh, just see over here, there's kind of a, a black area in the frame, and that's one bit that I'm not particularly keen on, and it might need removed, I just don't know until I can see it on a bigger screen. But really, really like this. And I can also see some potential shots heading in that direction using the light that's coming in and kind of diffused light. So what I'm gonna do is set up on the back of the camera there and walk you through how I'm gonna take this shot. So hopefully what you should see is, I'll just press record on the back of here now. Now I've got that tree almost on the, on the right hand third. It's almost on that intersecting line that comes down there. And you can see what I've been doing is, I'm just underexposing it a touch because the I'm getting sunlight on these logs and they're really quite bright. So what I'm having to do is, is just dial that back a touch because I don't want those to overexpose. Now what I'm also doing is, you'll notice on the frame, this letterbox format again, and I'm using it to death in these woodland situations because I just think it works so well, um, is I've got a bit of sky off to the top left and I really want to leave that. I want to diffuse that light. And in order to do that, two things. So I've got a circular polarizer, case circular polarizer on just to kind of saturate those lovely blues and also the greens as well. And then on top of that, what I'm gonna do is pop a case black mist filter. Now what you'll see is happen is, is when I pop that on, in that top left hand corner, it's gonna diffuse that white light that's coming in from the top left. And it's gonna kind of almost make it glow. Now the problem is when you add that, it's going to desaturate everything in the scene as well. So what I tend to do is, is I take one shot with the uh, just the polarizer on and no black mist. And then I'll take another shot with this um, diffused black mist filter on. And what that means is, in post, I can kind of add that glow back in the left-hand side. I'll probably leave it out of everywhere else, but I can add it back in in that top left. And it's just going to add that sort of atmosphere and that glow in that top corner and just sort of give it a bit more depth to the image, I think. So what you also see happening is, because this light is coming in also behind that tree, you're getting sort of um, streaks of light coming through and lighting up those bluebells in the background, which I think works well as well. And that kind of adds depth to the image as well.
So just come up the hill a little ways here, just up from that lower section where I've just been shooting, just to see what these bluebells were like. And I thought it might stop, but actually they just keep going and going. And the further you come up this hill, actually, the brighter they become. So I found another shot right here, which is another letterbox panel, <laughs> surprise, surprise. However, the reason why I keep using this, especially in these locations where you have so much sky, some, some of the time I want to use that sky and uh, use the highlights that it gives and the glow that it's gonna give. But in some scenes, I actually wanna eliminate that altogether and just focus on the color leading into those fresh greens. And that's what I've done with this shot here. So what you'll see is, if I just press record now, what you'll see is, is this pano leading right into this main tree. Now the main tree being this one here, if I move my focus point and select it there, you can see what I'm talking about, that one there. And then obviously I've got the other one, which is off here. And what I've done is separate them all out as best as I can. Looking back right the way through the scene, there's none of them overlapping as far as I can tell. I'm focusing in just above that lower third line there, just probably about a third of the way in, somewhere like that. I'm not too concerned again about shutter speed because again, it's a pretty calm day through here and I've not got immediate foliage. The only thing that's gonna be moving is the actual bluebells themselves. And basically what I'm doing is, if there's a little bit of uh, movement in those, I just hang fire a little bit, wait for them to uh, stop moving and then grab the shot. I've put a circular polarizer on again. You'll see the difference it's made already. If I can just spin this now, you'll see what's happening there is that it's just lifting those little bits of glare off there. I'm just gonna double check. Just lifting those little bits of glare off there and saturating those colors just that little more. And I think it's just helping to lift the shot even more. So I'm just gonna set that. I'm just going to adjust my exposure again because obviously I'm having to adjust it because I'm on the top of the hill up here the lights changing more continuously so I have to keep changing my settings to match now the other thing I'm doing as well as having the circular polarizer on is adding that case mist filter again so I'm taking a shot without it and a shot with it and the only thing that that's doing is kind of helping just give a little bit it's almost like a, adding an autumn effect but in person so it's just adding that little bit of ethereal glow. Now I'm just popping that on over the top of my uh, circular polarizer so that I've got the polarizer in the right place. And then I just pop that on and take exactly the same shot. I don't have to adjust any other settings because it's not making any difference to my exposure. So I just take one with, one without, and I just keep alternating that as the light changes to get the best look. And it's just a really lovely scene because you've got all these purple flowers and then off in the distance, you've got that band of fresh green color. So I'm gonna carry on taking this shot as the light changes to get the best conditions I possibly can. And then I'll pop that shot up for you. Beautiful, isn't it? That is just, that's the best I've ever seen in the lakes. It's stunning. I've never seen like carpets of it like this. No. You're back on again? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think they're quite up yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just going to keep repeating that bit. <laughs> just to make it difficult for me to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so how have you found shooting downhill? Because I've just been uh, looking at it and it's completely different from where we've just been shooting over the other side because you've got more canopy, there's more green over here, eh? There's so much more to play with. Yeah. So much more. And there's so many quirky trees and points of interest. That little green tree that's just standing proud. Just try and spin you around here. There you go, just down here. Yeah. Is it that little green tree or bush? Yeah. Just standing proud in that 
carpet of blue. Yeah. Um, just wonderful. And you get that that def that definition as well between the blue and the green. There's a there's a definite line. Yeah, yeah. And that's interesting to play with as well. It is. I mean, I've been mo mainly doing uh, those panoramas again today, but I'm just looking at this, and I I can finally get a 16 by nine that's going to work. Yeah. And open the frame up a bit more. Yeah. Oh, the panels are good though. I do a lot of panels. Yeah. But wherever you look, there's so much interest. Yeah. Here, it's brilliant. Just a beautiful little area. So what you'll see is this time I've actually managed to open it up to a 16 by nine. And the reason for it is, is you've got lots more to play with. In other words, there's a lot more canopy to play with. So there's a lot more um, definition between the green and the purple of the uh, flowers there. Now, obviously, if I open the frame right up again, I'm going to uh, bring the sky back in again. So I feel as though 16 by 9 is about right. If I go to 4 by 3, you can see I'm bringing more of that sky in. And yeah, I could tilt it down again, but I think it's going to be a little bit more unbalanced because I'm going to have way more foreground than I am background. So I feel as though about 16 by 9 just seems to work quite well for this shot anyway. Now I can probably raise it up just a touch more without bringing too much more of that sky in. You can just see it. if I lift it up there, the sky is just in that top left. I'm just going to remove that. So about here. And you can see the difference it makes. Now just waiting for a bit of this light just to hit this foreground tree here. And it just makes all the difference. It just lifts the scene. Now focusing about a third of the way in again, you can just see that I've got this boulder off to the right here, which has got a little fern around it and it's all mossy and everything. I think that just gives a little bit of interest in the foreground element. And then background is just that lovely vibrant green. So polarizer on again, just to kind of make the most of these purple colors. But what I'm gonna actually do with the polarizer this time is I'm gonna take a shot with it polarized and then what I'm going to do is reduce the polarization because obviously what happens when I've put the polarizer on it really saturates those greens at the back of the frame and I don't want them so bright but I want the the foliage of the flowers in the in the foreground to be as bright as possible so what I'm then going to do is adjust my polarization and take it off and you can just see when I turn that in fact I'm just noticing I've got something on there like a fly or something like that there we go if i turn that polarization off there you can just see that those greens come away from being really dark green to much more lighter color which i think is more natural for that foliage back there so i'm going to take a shot for that as well and then i can blend the best parts of both together to get the best shot possible but I think that's going to work really, really well. It's simple settings again. Um, I'm at ISO 200 F16, tenth of a second there because there's absolutely no wind and just grab the shot. And when I've got those back in post, I've done the magic with blending both of those together. I'll pop that shot up for you. Yeah, this place, honestly, is on another level to the mm. place we visited last definitely, definitely, definitely. two weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago, yeah, because it'll be two weeks till I get this out. So, yeah, 
Yeah, definitely uh, on another level. I mean, the, the amount of blue that was through there today, unreal. Awesome. There's just carpets of it, fantastic. If you, could, if you couldn't get a shot in there, there's something wrong. The thing is, you, you can come here, have a look from here and think, nah, and drive away. Yeah. But it's unbelievable, different yeah. story up there, isn't it? You just walk in a little ways and it's just amazing. Mm. So if you guys know where we are, you've got to come here ASAP. Yeah, and if you don't, well... Yeah, if you don't, more fool you. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I didn't realise we had this up in the lakes, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you see all this sort of thing on images from down south. Great big open areas of bluebells, but I didn't realise we had them here. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Good fun. Yeah. Let's well, see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, desperate to get away. <laughs> well, stay tuned because uh, we've got plans to do other stuff. So uh, hopefully yeah. in the future. Apparently it's my turn to uh, take you somewhere next time. Eh? It is, yeah, yeah. yeah You've yeah. got to give me one of your secret locations yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Local pub. Oh, that'll do for me. <laughs> yeah. We did mention about going to Ireland, didn't we? Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah. Ireland. Talked about a few things. So. A few other places, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah. stay tuned and hopefully we'll come up with something. My new bezzy mate. <laughs> we'll come up with something, I'm sure. it be good fun. <laughs> right, thanks very much for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. Go and check Gary's channel out yeah. and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Take care.